let's talk about palettes that are small and neutral. The workhorse palettes that a lot of women want to just have available to go to on the day to day. In fact, when I was in my 20s and 30s, I think I only had a small handful of individual shadows and I wore them day after day after day. So recently, I don't know, last 10 years or so, 15, maybe even 20 big palettes have come about and I think the idea behind them was they look like what makeup artists look and everybody started to play with color and buy, you know, Morphe palettes, that kind of a thing and then Anastasia came out with palettes and I feel like that kind of changed everything. Urban Decay had their naked palettes, but I find that many people are intimidated by big palettes. They look inside a palette and it's, oh, I don't know what to do. I know that I am oftentimes intimidated by a larger palette and I really have to study the colors and see how everything works together. If you watched any of my big palette reviews, you see I do swatches not as they appear in the palette, but by color groups, so I can really see what's going on and that helps me to know it. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about those of you who really want to have a go-to palette. Maybe you won't use it every day, but you know it's there and that you can depend on it. And recently someone left a comment for me and said she was a COO, COO and does a lot of Zoom and she just wants to look good and put together and professional during those calls and that's what these kind of palettes are. There's no question, there's no muss, there's no fuss, there's no performance question and let's get into it. I put together three different kinds of neutrals because I think there are three different kinds. There's cool, there's truly neutral and there's warm. You may want one over the other, or you may find, if you have a warm skin tone, a warm neutral palette will actually look more neutral on you, where warm neutral palette on me doesn't look all that neutral. So here we go with some groups. These are things that I own and love, obviously, and without further ado, let's just talk. In the cool group from Viseart, there is Midsummer. Now, this is pretty darn neutral, but I do feel it runs a teeny bit cool. We have a little shimmer here, which is super lovely for variation, and we have something that is quite pink, kind of a berry-ish color, but if you take these two away right here, you are looking at a very, very neutral palette. If you are my age, I'm 60, and you have creepy eyelids, you know how hard it can be to blend things out. While these are dry to the touch, they blend like a dream on creepy eyes, so Viseart is a great brand for us creepy-eyed people. <laughs> so let's stay with Viseart. This is Violette Etendue, and this is what she looks like. Now, this doesn't look like a neutral palette, I understand. Take this away, hello, I am neutral. Even if you take like these away, you're still in the neutral land, but neutral cool over here and here as well. And these little pops. I would think if this is your jam, if this is a color story that works with your skin tone, your hair color, your eye color, that you could use these in the middle for evening. So this could be a day and evening palette for you. And I, I have to say, you guys, I haven't looked these up to see if they're still available. But somebody once said to me that I shouldn't be concerned with limited editions and things that aren't available because some people will take that information and go to eBay and see if they can find it there. So I'm, I'm keeping that in mind. Another Viseart, Cashmere. Um, yes, I think this absolutely runs cool. Unlike the palette we just looked at, this one is much more for a day look. There are shimmers. This row down here is shimmer, these two are shimmers, but they're not colors that pop and they're not metallics. So this is a lovely one for every day and if you are more casual, you don't want a blingy color for evening, for evening as well. I don't know if the next palette really belongs here. It could belong in my neutral as opposed to cool neutral, kind of berryish 
undertone, but we're going to go there in the next category anyway. So here it is. This is from Dior and it is called Soft Cashmere and it is a dream. Very similar. And I'm going to post right here a video I did with a Natasha Denona Glam Palette and this palette, one on each eye. And that Glam Palette I'm not including here because I want to talk about palettes that are smaller that don't freak you out. If you have not tried the new formulation of Dior, it was reformulated maybe a year and a half, two years ago. They are so good for crepey eyelids. So, so good. I'm not talking about the limited editions, which oftentimes are different formulas, but they're regular, always in stock things. Great for crepey eyelids. Very easy to blend. And while, even in this palette, I think almost everything has a little bit of shimmer to it, except for this chocolate brown, but it doesn't look metallic or weird. It just gives you some movement on your eye, almost like a satin. And maybe some of these you would call satins, actually. Soft cashmere in the neutral pool or neutral lane. Now we're going to talk about some neutral palettes, and that's probably where I have most of them. Let's start with this one, Kira Weiss. This is super small. If you want something you can fit practically in your wallet, depending if you wanted those zip wallets, you could put this in your wallet. You're going to need a brush though. This is so neutral and lovely. The issue that I have with this, I've only used it a few times, is these rows are so small. You really need to be super careful. Let me see. This is, you know, a typical brush here. Let's see. You've got to be kind of careful with this one, but if you're fine with using smaller brushes and taking your time, this is a lovely, very compact, very everyday kind of palette. Similar to that one, but your brush will actually fit in it. Elegant packaging, Victoria Beckham. It's almost like a card holder. So small, but it has some heft to it because this is metal. It has a mirror. And I feel that this could go for my color, lighter than me, and even people who are a deep medium, because this area right here is so dark. So if you're very, very pale, you're going to be doing this area. If you're very, very dark, you're doing this area. If you're in the middle, you can kind of do the whole palette. And it is quite, mm -hmm. quite neutral. I would say this peach well, I call it a shell color. It reminds me of an in inside of an abalone shell or a conch shell or something like that. Kind of adds a skin tone to it for someone like me. I just adore this palette. If you were traveling and you wanted something small, this is the way to go. It gives you what you want. No metals, no shine, no nothing in this palette. But if that's something you want, you just go into the single. And I will do a video on one and dones uh, soon. Another one that I really like, it was a limited edition. I don't know that it's around anymore because, it, well, it came out, there were two. You know, you know who's a cougar most, baby. <laughs> Shantakai. Yes, not a lot of product, the whole bit, but this is such a fantastic neutral palette. Only four shades, nothing to get confused about. I'm just going to swatch. I'm not swatching everything. They're really nice formulas, you guys. So easy to work with. It's a great one. Now, this palette Tamara gave to me when she was in town a year and a half ago, and I think I've only used it once or twice, and I'm not sure the colors actually work for me, but it doesn't mean they won't work for you. And this is Going Coconuts from ColourPop. This is what she looks like, and it's really not too cool. This is a little cool. This is a little cool. This might be a little warm. It really, really falls right in the middle. There are some shimmer, glitters, whatever, right down here. And then this one is a matte that has teeny little sparkles in it. Very, very, very teeny. 
and this is also a great one where you're just not going to get confused really depends on your skin tone I find that the ColourPop shadows are pretty decent I've only had well I only have one that I bought for myself and I have returned a couple just because the color stories didn't work for me but they're pretty solid now this one I'm not sure if it's still around this is from Chanel it's Tweed Brune et Rose Brown and Rose are you kidding me I use this so so much I would say if you are darker than me you're gonna love it if you're lighter than me you're probably going to stay in this zone and use this for either outer corner or for lining and you might stay away from this because it's it's a bit dark if I cover this up you know lighter and with it, and you look at it from here, you think, well, it's kind of a, a dark palette. I think it has a nice variety of who it can work for, and it's absolutely just beautiful, just every day, except there's shine in all of these, but the shine, again, it's Chanel. It's not Natasha Denona. It's not Pat McGrath. You're not going to get some crazy, crazy stuff. I'm going to swatch. Look at... Are you kidding me? It's just lovely. And there it is right there. Super, super lovely. Even though there are sheens, like I said, not big sheen, just gives a little movement. I love this one. Top four palettes are palettes that I really, I didn't get. What was the excitement about? Why did people love them so much? And finally, I got the right palette for me. I have several Tom Ford palettes, but once you get the right one, you totally get it. So I'm going to show you what the right one is for me. And that's Sue La Sable. Uh, yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it. And it looks like this. The color story is so interesting because sometimes I think it looks a little warm. And sometimes I think it looks a little cool. Again, I'm not going to get a crazy look out of this. I'm going to get a daily, sophisticated, well-contained, everyday, you know what I mean? It's for real life. It's not for Pat McGrath, we're going to a disco, we're going to a rage, or Natasha Denona, hi, we're metallic and have a wing going up to our forehead. It's not that. It's for every day. And once I got this, I used it over and over and over again. Really enjoy this. Such a beautiful, beautiful formula. And I'm going to do another video soon on brushes because I do feel that how something performs depends on what you're using with it. And I happen to really like and lease the Tom Fords with these kind of brushes. I am losing my mind. I cannot remember the name of the word. I'm singing sable it's not sable and i it's truly i just froze for a minute what is the word what kind of brush is that squirrel i knew it was an s okay squirrel brushes another one is visner and i have to say that ages ago i bought a palette from bobby brown it was an empty palette and put in my own shades and i put in a shade in this zone in this zone and in this zone I don't use them that much. I find that actually Bobbi Brown's shadows are a little bit dry. These are not dry, but again, there's movement to all of these. I don't think any of them is matte, not even this one. Some skin tones are going to like this. This runs a little bit cool. This could have been in the cool zone, but very nice neutral. Now I'm going to bring in a couple of larger palettes because they deserve it. And this is one of them. There's six instead of four. And by the way, you guys, I, I am going to bring in photos where I can of me using this because I've reviewed all of them and have all the videos down below if you want to take a look. This is Pat McGrath, Velvet Liaison. And it's very interesting because when I saw this color, I thought this is warm palette. Your eye goes to what your eye goes to. And then I realized, oh, these are kind of cool in the berry tone where this seemed kind of warm, but it's not that warm. This is a very interesting palette. I feel you could get a little bit warm right here. Definitely on the cool side right here. You can use this shade here to lighten up something like this. I find that most Pat McGrath palettes are far too dark for me, but I love that she put a cream kind of color, kind of a wheat 
color in here, which I use to lighten up the other colors if need be. Entirely matte palette. I had to get it because it was entirely matte because I always said I love her mattes and wish she would do a full matte. The formulas are not the same as in the Mothership palettes as far as I can tell. I, oh God, I don't know the last time she did a Mothership. Those mattes were beautiful and I think she's changed over to these, this kind of packaging and a different kind of formula and not as easy to blend. It doesn't feel like it's melting into your skin kind of a thing with the new ones. They're a little bit more scratchy, but they do blend well. They do last on your lids, and this particular palette has a very nice color story that I think is neutral, but it can give you a little cool at the same time. Another one in the neutral palette I actually finished, and I was about to shut down, and I had this right in front of me, but because it's not shaped like a palette. I just didn't see it. This is the I Love You. It comes from the Westman Atelier I Love You set. It has mascara, and it has a liner, and it has this. Hopefully, she will come out with these on their own without being part of a set. It was limited edition, but I saw recently that somebody does have it, so I am going to link it below. These are the colors. Hello Neutral Zone, and I just want to swatch. I have to say, there's something different about this formula. When you compare it to her others, it's not as odd. That's the only word I can use. With her other ones, you had to use her crush to get it to pick up, but with this, I don't find that to be the case. I can use my brushes, and for this shade in particular, I oftentimes just use my finger and of course my nail's a little long now, so <laughs> that didn't work so well. But here they are. So let me try that again. I'll use my, my pinky finger. It's right here. Fantastic. And when I first got this, I used it all the time, over and over and over again. And then it sold out and I thought, well, I probably shouldn't use it anymore. That's not going to be helpful to anybody, but I think it's still around and she may come to release these by themselves. I don't see why she wouldn't because they're so darn good. The colors are better than anything else she's done. I really like the green one a lot, but this to me is ideal. And finally, I have a couple of warms. I thought I had more warms. But let's go for it. Again, some of these I'm not sure if they are still around. This is something I can't pronounce. Tweed Curve. Probably saying that wrong. It is a basic daily palette. It's very basic, but it runs warm, even if you take that gold out. I loved the look I got out of this when I did the review, and I felt it was such a more sophisticated look for holiday instead of a dark gray or black or a lot of color. It was browns with this incredibly beautiful gold tone. Maybe not for every day, maybe not for every day, but if you skip this tone right here, maybe so. Again, I'm not sure if these are still around. I thought these were limited editions, but this is beautiful. Another from Chanel, Lumiere at Vibrations, which is a little bit similar. The colors are not the same as the tweed, but we have this lovely gold here. And I think this one is probably still around. See how neutral those two tones are? And let me just wipe off. And this gold here, which is not as crazy as this gold here. It's more like a champagne gold mix. Beautiful, a little bit on the warm side, but not terribly warm. It could almost be neutral if it weren't for these golds. Another really pretty one. Another from Dior that is neutral. Dior does a lot of very colorful palettes, so neutral palettes are a little more difficult to find, I think, but this one does it. This is New Dress, but unlike the cashmere, this is a little bit warmer. Not terribly warm. If you just cover up this peach in the center, you can see it's spot on neutral, but that peach 
gives it a little bit of a neutral warm zone, not too much so. It is beautiful, it's great for every day, and this I also highly recommend. I don't think there's anything matte in here. Possibly the center shade is matte, but again, the Dior's, they just don't have those screaming, shiny things. Just a little bit of life. And now a couple of bigger palettes and one honorable mention. This is the first ColourPop that I ever bought and I love it. I don't use it that often. For me, it's very specific for spring and it's really not neutral, but it could be neutral depending on how you use it. It's called Sweet Talk and I believe that it's still around. And you know, when they package it like this, it, it could change the way you view the colors. There is definitely a peachy, warm, and yet somehow kind of neutral vibe to this. A little bit more than neutral, but really, really pretty if you want to jazz it up a little bit more. Now, a couple of palettes that are bigger. We're in that bigger zone now. Really worth mentioning is the Patrick Ta, the first one, the Major Dimensions, which is browns, and I feel like it runs a little bit warm. I mean, this brown seems to have some red in it, but up here we have some warms. This whole row shimmers, this whole row mattes. These two are creams. I will post the video, but I have to be honest, the look I got for that video wasn't fabulous. In fact, I had used this palette for a video before that, but I didn't show my application because the video was about something else, and it was such a prettier look than what I got on the video. These two shades are so interesting. Well, not the shades, the formulas. I had a great time working with these and getting myself a little wing. Super easy to work with because they're creams. These are fine. I don't need them, but there's something about these. Every time I use this, I get such a pretty look that's not too much. I do look like I'm wearing makeup but so, so pretty, and it deserves some love, I think. And then the final is the Natasha Denona Bronze Palette. When this came out, people were saying, eh, it's so boring. I think it's stunning. Now, without these two shades, maybe I wouldn't like it as much. These two shades are very unique, and when you bring them into the mix, no matter what you're doing, it changes everything. And it's right here. There's almost like a bit of an aubergine to these. And when you look in the palette, you, you wonder, is this black? It's not. There is a purpleness to those. I love using this in the summer months. If I'm going to do something warm, this is what I'm going to do. And the shimmer colors in here are not outrageous. They'll change. Like now you can see this one's pink, but it doesn't look pink here. So there's a nice variation, and they're just not too much. I'm just going to swatch a few things. So here, here, here. So pretty. And that's these right up here. I think it falls in neutral warm. I really, really, really do. Um, would I appreciate a color that's a little bit lighter to mix with? Yes kind of a warm cream color, like that color in the Pat McGrath was a bit of a warm cream color, would have been nice, but I still think it's great. And you guys, that is it. I hope that this was helpful. If you have any of these, maybe I'm reminding you to pull them out and start to use them. I think that aside from these larger ones, with this one you can get a variety of looks. With this one, it's just about the depth of tone. That's the difference you're going to have. Same color story, just deeper. Where this, because of the shimmers and they're different, you could kind of go different directions. And this, you know, it's for fun. But most of these I consider to be palettes that you could use for months at a time and then, okay, I'm bored with that one. I'm going to do a different one. Or it's a different season, so I'm going to do a different one. And just not be worried about it's not performing. You know, it's always when we're in a hurry or when it's important or we're doing a Zoom and we want to look good that we mess up because whatever reasons, <laughs> we're being sloppy, we're being fast, or the product is fussy and we're willing to put up with the fuss most of the time, but when we're in a hurry, we forgot, oh yeah, this is fussy. 
I don't find any of these to be fussy. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it very helpful and I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe and smart and I'm wishing you good health.